Hi, and welcome to Making Scientific Figures with Illustrator and Blender. I'm Christopher Gutierrez, and I'm an artist and scientist and an assistant professor in the Department of Physics and Astronomy at UCLA. The goal of these two workshops will be to provide basic practical skills and useful pointers for creating scientific figures and scientific art. I'll talk about two software platforms, Adobe Illustrator CC and Blender. Illustrator is a vector-based program for making graphic art like the image I made here on the left. Illustrator uses a paid subscription model, so check your school or institute for an academic license. The other software is Blender, which is a powerful 3D computer graphics program for making really stunning 3D images, like the two images I made on the right. So Blender is free and open source and can be found in the link below. Now, besides making 3D objects, Blender has an amazing physics engine that allows you to simulate realistic lighting and to set the physical properties of materials, like their index of refraction. For some background, I've been an artist my entire life, way before I studied math and physics. And this has really helped me in being able to express my scientific ideas. And as a scientist, that is one of our major goals and the goal of these workshops, to give you the tools to most clearly express your interesting and sometimes complex results to a wide array of people. So I first want to thank the Quantum Matter Institute at the University of British Columbia, where I first developed these tutorials as a series of summer skills workshops the last two years. I've since given these workshops at the University of Michigan and the Institute for Quantum Computing at the University of Waterloo. So big thanks to the organizers and attendees who made these workshops better. So why did I decide to create these workshops? Uh, it comes from personal pain. The figure here is one that I published in my very first paper as a grad student, and it's riddled with ugliness that still bothers me. It has so much wasted white space, the scatter plot is way too big, the 2D image plots uh, could be made larger. So my problem was that I assumed that journal art departments would take the image I gave them and rescale them or shift them in some nice way. But they do not have the time or resources to do that. The onus is on you to provide the good figure to them. Now contrast that with a figure I made as a postdoc. I've maximized the figure real estate and without cluttering the image. So how did I do that? Well, the lesson I learned was to create for myself journal templates. Here I've created artboards with the maximum figure sizes and color modes and font families for the various journals. I'll talk more about how to use templates in part five of the Illustrator workshop. So as a fun exercise, I went back and redid that figure, but using my current workflow where I use journal templates. And the figure is so much better. I've reduced the size of the scatter plot so I'm still displaying the same amount of information. However, I've really maximized my figure real estate by increasing the sizes of these uh, 2D images. Uh, even this atomic image is now bigger, showing more information. So using templates really just helped me to organize my thoughts better. And this figure is almost 50% smaller than the one on the left. So what's the point in scientists learning to make nicer figures? Well, here's an example where a professor at UBC commissioned an artist uh, to make a complex figure for a paper. And it's not that bad, but I offered that we could do a lot better in-house. So I spent about a week going over some uh, illustrator basics with the grad student Katie, and she produced this. And in my opinion, this is much better figure. So working with Katie and seeing her create this figure in a paper that was eventually published in Science, uh, that was another huge inspiration for these workshops. And in general, as scientists, we know so much more about our research that can be conveyed to outside artists. Um, at the end of the day, we spend so much time in the lab, doing the experiments, doing the theory calculations. We ought to put a lot of care when it comes to finally presenting those, those amazing research results to the world. And so another reason for these workshops is to learn the tools to promote that work. Again, all that time doing research, the hard work, the grant money, you now want to make sure that as many people know that your amazing research results are out there in the world. So these are covers and promotional artwork that I've created for my own publications and for my colleagues. The top two on the left, I used Illustrator, and for the 3D work, I used Blender. So cool story about this nature physics cover. I've been an artist basically since I was a baby. And this was my biggest exposure in my first paper as a grad student. Okay, so the first set of workshop videos will cover Adobe Illustrator. 
and we'll cover topics for absolute beginners up to advanced tips and tricks for regular users. Finally, in part five, I'll end with an example of using templates in my workflow to create this figure on the right. So by the end of the workshop, everyone should be able to create something like this in a matter of minutes. Now, Blender is an extremely powerful and complex software with an awesome physics engine. So my goal isn't to teach you everything about Blender. There's no time. There are already so many great YouTube videos on learning Blender, videos that I actually learned from. Instead, this workshop is to summarize some of the main aspects of Blender as an introduction and to cover topics that would be of particular interest to scientists. For example, how to input atomic or protein data to create images like this one on the left. So the goal is really to get scientists familiar with the basics of Blender in order to get them to the stage to create an image like this. Okay, stay tuned for the Blender workshop videos and for smaller tips and tricks for both Illustrator and Blender in the future. And this is important, if you happen to make any beautiful figures or artwork from these workshop videos, please, please share them with me and the world on Twitter or Instagram. Thanks and happy figure making.